Have you ever heard of one needle knitting? You're about to. Here's a small example. What I'm doing here is called several things. One needle knitting is one of the things. Also loop crochet. Also faux chet. It is really not either crocheting or knitting, although it produces an interestingly similar fabric. Quite a few tools over the years have been sold to allow a person to do this, and I'm actually not using any of them. Let me show you what I am using. This is my machine knitting transfer tool and I'm using it because I noticed the strong resemblance between this and the tool sold as the fauché. Some of the little tools had guides. They almost look like a bead positioned on this. I'll call it the needle to help you know how far to push forward. I don't really think it's necessary since really the stitch length is determined by the pull back and somebody with any needle arts experience will quickly develop a, a repetitive motion that makes even stitches. So, you know I love to make tools. And even though there's no financial incentive to make this tool myself, because there is the Fauché tool for sale, I have my transfer tools, and the antiques sometimes become available. I'm saying antiques, they are from the late 60s and early 70s, which for a little hand-working tool is pretty old, but not a million years or anything. But I love to make tools, so I have an idea how we can make our own. Let's give it a try. This involves removing jewelry first, because we'll be working with some putty that's not easy on jewelry. I think we could use either this, a good-sized yarn needle, or this, a double eye needle. I checked and the yarn goes that I want to use, which is worsted weight, goes easily through either one. I'm going to select this one because I'm thinking that it will embed in the putty more securely because of that hole. We're going to start with a pin constructed like one of these. So we can unscrew that and have a clear access to the barrel area. This slides off on this one, and if I were to use it, I would put a little glue there and stick it on because I want it to stay there. Also, once you take the ink cartridge out, this will flop around, which doesn't actually hurt anything, but it'll drive you a little bit crazy trying to work with the tool. So a drop of super glue on there would be good. This pen, I think, would also work. It's similar. I'm purposely picking ones with pocket clips. You will see why. This one's even better than the last one because of the way the cartridge and the spring are constructed. When I pull that piece out, we have an even better opening. Same thing, I would need to secure that for best results. Just a drop of glue, though. Here's the one I'm actually going to try with. It's just like those other two, but this has already been secured with a drop of glue. And at some point in the past, I lost the little end piece, and since I don't need it, we'll go ahead and use it up. What I've got here is an epoxy putty. It's been open a long time, so I'm going to discard the end of it. This is a Loctite product, but it really doesn't matter what brand you use. There are several. There's a green and white one that I've seen sometimes at Lowe's. I've gotten this at Walmart. They're all quite similar for this purpose. They're stinky, but that's the worst of it. And what you do is you knead them together, possibly removing the label. Sorry, I didn't spot that until I felt something. I'm going to knead this together until it turns gray. The blue and white will completely blend. It'll take a minute and I'll feel it heating up as that happens. Uh, never fear, it does not heat up enough to hurt your hands. And I haven't had it cause my skin any trouble. 
in the small amounts that I use it. However, there are always those thin plastic disposable gloves if you're concerned for your skin. In this movie, you're going to see us make several versions of this tool. Here I'm making the prototype, and I've speeded it up very, very, very fast because we'll do a much nicer job for you later. But basically, blending the putty, filling the barrel of what used to be a pen with the putty, inserting the tool into it, embedding it as solidly as possible, making a nice neck around it that's smooth and supportive, and then letting it dry. Uh, because I'm using the tail end of an old piece of putty, a couple of the blue parts didn't fully dissolve, and you'll see that. It's a flaw in there. You can see it now. It's not hurting the function of the tool. I've been using it ever since, but it's not beautiful to behold. N neither is the whole thing beautiful to behold. However, it tested the idea, and it functions very well, and it's made of things you can probably salvage from the drawers around your house if you want to do it this way. There's my tool all finished. Later, when it's really good and dry and cold, I will um, sand off the excess that got on here. But we're starting with for the nicer tools. Jack just cut a piece of bamboo to the length that I want. If you cut between the nodes, you have a complete tube on the inside. This bamboo is from our yard. I'm not sure, but I think craft stores sell some if you need it. However, if they don't, emptying out the in contents of a pen like this would leave you with a similar tube, and so would very slender plumbing pipe. Jack, you want to tell them about cutting bamboo? Yes, I'm using a miter box and I'm using the straight 90 degree cut. If you'll notice it, it tends to feather a little bit on the inside, so you have to use a real slow cut to keep that to a minimum, but that's all we're doing, and if you'll notice, what I've done is gone right outside of that and that. This is the node she was talking about because it's actually sealed up right through there. It's really hard to tell exactly where, so just back up like an eighth of an inch. Here is a piece of bamboo cut that allows you to see we're using the pieces that came off, and they're open, but you're closed in here. So if we want to use this one, we have to cut between my thumbs. It's okay that it makes these fuzzy things. True, we don't want them near the fabric, but I've got sandpaper here. While he cuts the next one, I'll be sanding them clean. Fortunately, bamboo sands quite easily. I'm nearly done here. This is not hard work. Here are our components all prepared, and let me walk you through the plan. This will be the basic tool. This is a double-eye needle ones that would be used for a bulky knitting machine. This is a screw-in eyelet. That'll end up being our thread guide, and this is our working needle. Pulling this out of the glare. This is going to be a really bulky version of the same thing. Using a cotter pin, and it will accept number six yarn. You can see I've tried it. I just have fuzz all over the place. And this version is an innovation. I don't really know if it will work. This will be the thread guide. The yarn will run up through this tube and feed here, which will keep it out of the way of our hands when we're holding the tool, but I'm not sure how well it will flow. This is a ribbon threading guide from the craft store. I think originally mine came in a packet of three and they're not expensive. I looked on eBay and it looks like um, silver plated antiques are super expensive. Be sure that is not what I am using. Right, the little black mark that you may see right there is where she wants the tool to start coming out of the handle. So what I've done is put my little locking alligator pliers right on the black mark so that the, if it made any serrations on the 
cotter pin, they'll be inside holding it as a grippy. Then what I did was took my little screwdriver and opened the sides. I put a nail down in there, a 16 penny common. Then I took these other pliers and I crimped this back shut because they were splayed out. And the point of this is that there won't be a great deal of putty into which we're embedding the cotter pin. And we wanted some of the putty to go in between there to make a more secure seat. Exactly. So that's how we did that. We've softened and blended a piece of the putty already. And Jack is now fashioning it around the splayed end of the cotter pin in order to work it into the tube, the bamboo. This time, we're using a different putty than you've seen. <clears throat> this is called the Odie Fix-It Stick. This one is steel reinforced. <clears throat> it's generally located in the plumbing supply section, whereas the other versions of the putty that I've shown you are in the um, glue and caulking area. This one is the strongest of all of them. But truthfully, we're using it because it's the one that we have on hand. And I don't mind getting it all over me poor. Yeah, it comes right off. We can use my new coffee soap to scrub it off. Actually, my scrubs in a tub work real well. I know it. You can see Jack's trying to get it as smoothly worked in as he can and also create a smooth cone-shaped join at the top of the bamboo where it grips the tool. That area is going to come in contact with the fabric and so it does need to be smooth. He doesn't have to get it absolutely perfect because the putty is sandable once it's dry. And what I'm doing is taking the excess pieces and using them to push what's on the top down inside the tube okay. with the force of my fingers. It is pretty important that the tool end be well seated because it will be used for every single stitch you make for the life of the tool. And although each stitch is not created with a great deal of force, it's a lot of stitches. And we're just about to get non-pliable, so I gotta check my positioning. And this is where I want to get it centered and smoothed out. You can see it's starting to... Yeah, you don't have a in. long work period with this putty. Right. And you do want it to stick. Yes, you do. And smooth out as right. much as possible. And the trick is around the edge to smooth it over the edge. And as Catherine just said, you can sand it later. I will be starting to need another piece. Let me stick my hands out where people can see them. This part is light gray and dark gray, this particular brand. Some of them are green and white or blue and white. This one is gray and gray. So I'm looking for it to turn into a same color, medium gray, all the way through. All right. I think we're ready here. And I've almost got this ready. This putty is behaving today. It's because we brought it in and warmed it up. Could be. There you go. And which one is this for? Uh, for to put the end, the yarn guide end. Remember the first prototype tool I made. I just used the pin clip as a yarn guide. You can see my project is still attached. It actually works fine, but I thought we'd try some other things. And bamboo doesn't grow with pocket clips. I know. Very yeah. thoughtless. GMO. <laughs> Most of this kind of putty hardens to usable within a very short period of time. 10 to 20 minutes, it's 
it seems hard and usable an hour or two when it truly is as hard as it ever will be. Is that about right? Yes. Uh, it's fully hardened in 24 hours is what it says on the tube. But what I've always done when I've worked with it is make a little ball or a button when out, of the excess. out of the excess. And then I know that when that ball or button is hard and goes clank when you drop it on the floor, then yeah, it's ready. It sounds like a bead of... A ceramic bead. A ceramic bead being dropped when you when it's ready. Right. And you can't push your fingernail into it. Here, make a button. Make a ball out of make this a one. Button. And I will finish this up. So it is, in fact, a bead. All right, we have our... Now, do you, which direction do you want it to match the cotter pin face? Angle it 45 degrees. We'll give that a try. The little bracket loop thing Jack is inserting, we can't see you if you can put your hands in. I yeah. Be able to see. Okay, go ahead and work. The, what he is putting in there is something that I got with a bunch of split rings in a mixed bag from the craft store. So that's what I'm using for the yarn guide on the bulky. This is what they look like. And there's, it is a split ring, you can see. Yes. Now we're going to do the same thing. With a little less putty this time. Okay, and, a, um, and smaller tools. And but go ahead and display the tool. And what it does to your fingers. Yes, but they clean up. Okay. We've got a little marble-sized piece of putty all softened up. I'm going to need a little bit more than this. Okay. I'll be and I'll, you start on it, and what I'll do is I'll use it on the other, what, the excess. Yeah, I need quite a bit more. Okay, I'm working, working. Um, as fast as I can. Fortunately, it's working up nicely today. Yes. And I pretty well cleaned my hands while it, once it dries, it comes off pretty nicely. It and does. It, and then yeah. any cleaner that you have that will get the little residue, like out of your fingernails and your ears, because it gets heavy. I've noticed if your skin is dry, it sticks to you worse than right. if it's nice and moist. Right. That's perfect. Should I go into technique? Yeah, go into technique. All right, the technique here is to make one end of it thin enough to go right in. And then if there's a fat spot, see this will go right in there, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Not quite. Mm -hmm. Make it so it goes right in. Then where your fat spot is is where you can start bunching it up to make your top seal. And this stuff is really good about sticking to anything it comes near. So the inside of your piece will adhere to it. I hope you're going fast enough. It looks like it could be hardening. No, it's not. I'm just do that. I'm nervous. This particular tool done with the double eye needle of the size you would buy to work on a bulky knitting machine so a knitting machine supplier will have them. Um, that will handle worsted weight yarn. That's number four yarn in American terms. I think it would be eight to ten ply in Australian terms. In, in England, I, I can't quite remember what they say. In Europe, I know you usually talk about what kind of millimeter size of knitting needles or hooks, and number four would take between four and five millimeter, depending on how you wanted your fabric to be. So that's... Again, where do you want the eyelet compared to the I flat? have decided I want to lay my thumb on the flat, so I want the flat of the eyelet up. That seems to be how I hold this kind of tool. Okay. You'll have to clean off the eyelet because I've touched it. That's okay. With that stuff's... Yucky hands. That stands off just fine. For those watching, you're going to get some mess on the tool, 
but the super fine sandpaper gets it right off. And I will tell you, if you were watching carefully, you'll notice that once it got in, I wasn't up to the mark she gave me for the depth that she wanted. So what I kept doing was putting a little pressure down with the needle and pushing more putty down around the edges. A good base of putty in there is a secret to a long-lasting tool, and it's the thing I'm the worst at accomplishing. Jack is more patient and skillful at getting it in there than I am. Now your eyelet. Right, and I'm needing some more for you. I think I can get it started with this and then finish it up. Okay. Yes. You want it 45 degrees to the needle like it was on the other one? We'll give that a try. I really don't know. This is an experiment. I don't what? think it's I don't okay. think life will be over if I don't get it right. Probably will be. I think so. Life as we know it. <laughs> you know, the world has a lot of crisis going on, but this definitely overshadows all of it. Oh, absolutely. I think so. Did I make you way too much? No, I just want to work with it a little bit at a time. I'm trying to get it down in there and keep your eyelet free. This is the opposite problem of any of the oops. Oops. <laughs> other situations in that it wants to disappear down in there. The eyelet? Yeah. Yeah, it's little. And you know, I was thinking about it. That's a hardware store item. They're very easy to find. But if you're trying to go through drawers in your house and find things that'll work and you don't have one of those, I suspect a bobby pin might work. Yeah, I think it would. Cause that's, Who has bobby pins? Yeah, I have to be able to see. Darn it. No, we're not darning. <laughs> we're looping. It's true, that's what one of the ads calls it. Looping instead of knitting was one of the quotes on an ad. Well, and... Some of the ads were pretty loopy. <laughs> they were. I wish that I could show you all, but you'll just have to go on the internet and look. The first ad for one of these tools from the late 60s, early 70s that I saw had all these great fashions you could make, and they were side-splittingly funny. I actually remember them all. But um, Ooh, you're I, I was told about them. Oh, you were only told about them. Uh -huh. It's like most of the activities in the 70s, I heard about them. Uh -huh. The scratching sound you hear in the background is me sanding excess off the finished tool. It's hard enough to do that right now. I would, myself, I would let it get a little harder. Okay. I'll be more patient. This is why I have Jack. I tend to um, All right, now. jump in. Okay, let's show them the finished tool. There's the yarn guide. There's the working needle. Okay, here's our end. And this is the experimental one. I have knitted with the ends like this one. How far do you want it out? Um, about like you've got it. And I have knitted with ends like this one. But I have n not actually done a more than the minorist experiment with that um, ribbon threader. So between that and the yarn guide, this is a real prototype you're getting to see in action. And this one will not require putty on the far end of the bamboo tube because we're handling the yarn guide a different way entirely. Which is good because this is a small piece. Do you want me to get you a matchstick to pop, put some no, down no, in? No, I just want to take some of it off so I can work it down where it'll go in. Oh, 
Oh, that's working. It is then harder to work with because the tool is flat or simply because that's our skinniest piece of bamboo? Choice B. Okay. Is, is that out far enough? Let me see. Let me and there's a slight curve to it. Um, let me compare it to this one. It needs to be out just a tiny bit farther if that's possible. Oh, yeah. Although it gets to the point where it will not come back out. Okay. Did you manage a little? I did, just a hair. Okay. Well, I think that if you don't get it quite as far out, what will happen is this makes a good stitch size for number four yarn, and that will make a good stitch size for number three yarn. I actually got it out a little far. Okay. So, so e either way, and to those watching, that's a part of the way you can adjust for gauge. Initially, I thought that the forward motion, when you um, push into the fabric, that's what brings up the new length of fabric. And that part is true. I was right about that. And that would determine stitch size. But it turns out, if you have anything here that stops the forward travel, you can automate stitch size and just push up to that point every stitch, then they can't help but be the same. Oh, idiot proof. Well, is there really such a thing? But no, just stupid resistance. Yeah, that's what it is. What it is is going to make it easier to develop expertise. It won't take quite as much fine control on the part of the knitter. Yeah, we gave up on that in the automotive business, too. What? Well, there's no such thing. Yeah. Watch the news. Yeah. We do the best we can. <laughs> okay, as soon as he finishes that up, make, smoothing the join, we will be ready to attach it to the yarn guide. Here's the experimental version. You want to explain to us what you did? Yeah, here, here's our yarn guide. This is our tool handle. So the yarn will come out here, like the music does in the tuba, and then you'll knit with it. And what I've done is I have a DAP product here called Strong Stick, and it's an adhesive that's very quick setting, but it's got some actual distance to it. Here's a piece of it. Dimension. The yeah. Dimensional glue. There you go. See, it's got some thickness to it. I'm going to stick that little ball right down in there. And then when a minute, we'll know whether it's set. It says you can reposition up to 15 minutes. Uh, but I thought it would be really good for this because the two pieces of bamboo don't exactly lay flat like two before. No, and, and if you bought a machined product, you would get a smoother fit, but we're using bamboo. And we're using these teeny tiny pull ties that I just happen to have because this is what puts the cable back on the motor line inside of a garter carriage. But we're going to pull them tight there and hold it until the glue sets. And we don't know if we're going to need to leave them on or not, but we can always just clip the tails off and leave them. And I think the hand, my hand fits between mm, So mine surely so I'm will. So yeah. yours will too. And, as soon as and that's something a person could adjust. The size of tubing they use can be adjusted to the size of hand they have. And, of course, the positioning of the pull ties. Also. Now that I think about that, this is something fun to teach kids. But if you're a really little kid, these tools will be too big for you. Yeah, but if it tr was truncated <clears throat> about right there, right, you get a little teeny hand, two fingers of mine, would be able to get a good grip Yeah, on it. that was the thing when I was being taught to knit and do things as a little kid. The tools were a bit big for a three and four year old, but that's something we can adjust here. As always, the stitch that has a loop coming out of it, the turning loop, we do not work into. Work into the next stitch, hang the loop, pull back, push, hang the loop, pull back. You can learn to do them pretty much at the same time, the pushing and loop hanging. And at the end of every row, you chain one, 
turn. Examine the work to make sure that you're not selecting the wrong initial stitch. That's the one. Push forward. And we did get this sized so that if I push to the limit that the attachment of the tool will allow, I'm getting a stitch that's nice for this yarn. This is going to be such fun. As you know, I don't believe in rushing or thinking a lot about speed while knitting. But undeniably, it is very encouraging to see quick results. And I could knit a pair of slippers before supper time doing this. Well, probably only one of the slippers, but still, pretty darn good progress. Such fun. All right, let's try this one. Just a brief review. I have whole movies on knitting with these, but start with a slip knot. Then we chain. We'll just do a few stitches for the purpose of demonstration. Do one more chain stitch, then you want total stitches every row, because one is consumed with the turning. Finish the chain on this side, turn the work, skip the first chain that this loop is coming out of, work into the next one, and Loop and pull back. When I get to the end of this row, which is actually the hardest row of all, because you have so little to hold on to, but it's not giving me any trouble. Let's follow this down. There's the yarn guide. And that's working fine. I'm not having trouble staying out of the way of it. Chain one. Turn. And resume stitching. Now when we get to the end of this row, we'll lay some tools side by side and have a look. I think I see quite an improvement between the prototype, which did prove that the plan will work and it does knit well, and this one. This is the one where I created the yarn guide out of a separate piece of bamboo. So this is its maiden voyage. As you see, the pull ties aren't even removed yet. I just finished knitting to the right, chaining one, so I'm turning, and we'll knit again. I'm having a very good experience with it so far. Although a yarn guide is not even a necessity in a tool like this, and knitting can be done in the absence of one, this one is really performing well. I think it prevents that trouble that sometimes arises when you insert the tool and pinch here just a little wrong on the wrong side of the yarn supply and get an unwilling stitch. makes direct directionality a bit more obvious, I believe. Really liking it. I think this one, 
may end up being the fastest of all the tools. You never know until you're a few rows in because the first few rows you're concentrating on keeping a hold of these little bits of fabric. And then it gets a little more efficient. But I do believe this is a success. So, have lots of fun making your own one needle knitting tools, whether they be pretty or not so pretty. And once you've made a nice tool, watch my other movies on actually knitting and making projects with these tools.